welcome all we will see in the today's class the analysis of the watt governor okay how it works how the constructions how its principle last in general we have seen what is the function of the governor and uh, uh, why it is used uh, also we have seen the classification of the governor in the last class okay in the today's class we will see uh, that classifications we further extend and uh, among among from that see the watt governor is classified into two categories that is the centrifugal governor and other one is um, uh, inertia governor okay and let me check the video is recording or not yes it is recording okay okay we will move on to the, this topic okay in the today's topic we will see the watt governor okay the construction of the watt governor the, the analysis part we will see also that there are certain limitations we have see this is what the first type of governor right means the governors 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 classified as two categories right that is one is centrifugal and the other one is the inertia right which is not in our syllabus so we need not study of this governor in the centrifugal again there is a pendulum type right and in the pendulum type pendulum type the watt governor comes right here the watt governor is there okay let me take this eraser as small portion yes this i erase right in the centrifugal governor the pendulum type and pendulum type it is a watt governor which we are going to study in the today's class okay now see uh, this is what uh, let me this the animation and part i will show you please see this so that you will get the idea overall idea about this see yeah the animation is not that much proper it's not visible okay i think it's uh, now yes now it's comes right see this is how this governor is working see once again i will extend this see here there is a moment of this slew okay you i have already ex explained this in in my last class right and this is what the watt governor looks like okay this is what the construction of the watt governor let me write it watt watt governor okay see here it has uh, two arms right this thing i already explained the blank clack lever it's a trans when this uh, this sleeves goes move up and down uh, perform the motion up and down that times this <coughs> this black uh, bell crank lever uh, this adjust the whole throttle all accordingly to, according to the variation of the load okay that thing it it will do and uh, see the this watt governors are further classified into the Wide governors. These are further classified into three categories. Which are those? The first one is the closed arm. Closed arm. The second one is open, open arm, closed arm type. Open arm type. and the third one is pivoted arm type pivoted arm type okay see the pivoted arm type here uh, let me in short i will explain this is how the pivoted arm type looks like here the weight is attached at the end okay 
and this here there is slew and this is what the center line of right this is how the slew looks like right here it is attached okay the balls are attached at this place here the weight is attached the balls are and here it is a fixed right and it is rotated like this this is what the spindle let me instead of making it dotted let me make it dark because it is a spindle right this is what the spindle right and here the bell cranks are attached in this when it performs up and down motion right the well crank lever transmit the signal to the throttle valve and it regulate the supply of the fuel this is how the pivot in the open arm type th there is a little difference see here instead of cutting uh, mounting here instead of this it has li little bit taken it down like this and like this the construction of this open arm okay and this is what the spindle spindle at the center okay this is how here the ball is at a here why this highlighter is not coming here yes now i think right here at the end here the okay this is this is what the at the end the ball is attached and here the same arrangement is there that is slider uh, slider is slew it is not slider it is a slew is here okay it's a i shape the slew and when it starts a rotating spindle right this is how the uh, see instead of attaching this point the open arm arm type this point so this is what the pivot the arm type what is looking like okay there are two stoppers also because uh, when it's moves uh, this slew moves up and down right then it has to certain limits right it is, that's why the stoppers are also attached over here okay guys then now we will see the construction uh, the the analysis part of this uh, what governor okay see let me uh, draw first construction for this this is what the main spindle okay let me take in this side so that the same thing in the analysis part i will do here this is what the spindle okay on the spindle at this one end of the spindle they, these are the two arms which are connected okay and this arm is extended like this these are the symmetric eh? totally it's not looking symmetric but it, it has it must be symmetric okay let me take one and the shape here so that like this the balls are at the end okay <coughs> and this is a slew where and this sleeve has a stopper here here there is a stopper let me take this directly in order to show the stopper okay like this two stoppers are it's not the, the, this much big but just see these are the two stoppers right okay you understood uh, i try to uh, draw it in the spinematic way okay see now we will start the analysis for this this is what the omega angular speed how it is getting you know that thing i already explained you from the engine the bevel gear is attached and the bevel gear is directly attached to this uh, <coughs> spindle okay if engine starts rotating this automatically the spindle starts rotating with omega angular velocity right and this is what the alpha this i'll call it as alpha okay this is alpha and this angle is alpha okay and see the weight of this ball is acting downward that is mg this is what the weight 
and the one that is the centrifugal force when it starts omega then centrifugal force will come that is fc is equal to m r omega square this is what the centrifugal force right uh, and right now i will extend this line i have to take the moment that's why i will take the extend line like this okay for this point i will i will take the moment that is a okay this point i will call it as a b this point and the other point that is this point is my c okay now uh, now what uh, for the equilibrium of this rotation for now i am going to balance the for equilibrium for equilibrium for equilibrium of forces equilibrium means it's a it's a dynamic equilibrium right rotation dynamic rotational equilibrium so uh, the summation of m about point a should be equal to zero right dynamic equilibrium it's in because there is no force the net force is zero or net moment is zero you can okay the clock this the clockwise i will take it positive okay see about this point i am taking right the uh, the this this is the I, I, for this point i'll call the name it as e okay this point is e and this angle is alpha because see this angle i have considered alpha then this angle is also alpha right and now i'll balance that is the fc that is mr square mr omega square i am taking moment about this point a mr omega square into this perpendicular that is a be right and about this point this is clockwise and this the weight that is mg acting it is anti clockwise so i will take minus minus mg uh, that is anti clockwise so i have taken minus mg into the distance that is be into be okay that equate to zero these are the two forces acting on this ball right this is what just the equation you have to write from this see the m m get cancelled here okay the what you will get r omega square r omega square is equal to uh, this is uh, like me this is this is also b and this is also this is this is a yeah this is not b this is a right this is a let me correct this because see th this perpendicular distance i have to take for this right so this will come as a let me erase this okay a right uh, see m r omega square uh, what i will get g into a e upon a e upon b e right this what i will get and you know this a e upon b e since from this triangle a e upon b e is equal to see if i taken this is what the height of the governor let me take this is at a height and this from this center to here this is what the r that is the radius of the governor okay see from the triangle you can easily see this a uh, this a is this r this r and this a are equal right means it is r divided by this b e is where is b e this is a b b and h are both are equal right means b is equal to h so i'll this equal to this tan tan alpha right the ratio is equal the r by h ratio is equal right uh, once i put this value r by h in here i what i will get r omega square is equal to g into r divided by h r r will get cancelled here right from this what i will get the height of the governor that is h is equal to g by omega square right this is what the height of the governor i will get g by omega square this is this this is for wide governor and this is a very important formula now you extend this you know omega is equal to omega is equal to where it's a fourth slide right 
omega is equal to 2 pi n by 16 right if i put this omega n here then what i will get the 2 pi n by 60 h let me insert the new in the i will put this in the new page h is equal to g by omega square since omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 okay now i'll put this value h equal to g by 2 pi 60 right square into uh, this n square okay and see this is what the constant right and if i calculate this i will get the answer 895 you can check with your calculator also so the height of the governor is a function of this speed that and one constant that is 985 and divided by n square okay you understood this is what the important formula uh, for the governor okay now we will see one example this is for wet governor wet governor and in the exam there, there will be directly asked question from this so you have to keep this formula in mind okay means the height of the governor is 8, uh, 8, 895 divided by n square okay now we will see one example on this one take one example if engine running at if engine running at running at n1 equal to 20 rpm and n2 is equal to 15 rpm means between this speed the engine is running calculate the slew moment calculate the slew moment slew moment how we will do this let me see the h1 is given uh, the h now we know the h1 is equal to it is 895 divided by n1 n1 square here how much i will get if i put the n1 is here 20 right 895 divided by n1 square n1 is square right uh, from this i will get let me calculate this i have calculated see you have to use your one app also there is for uh, this is what the app works how it see this is what the, you have to use this calculator install in your mobile this calculator okay because this is very important and and the, this is what the virtual calculator right and you have to make practice on that because you in the scientific calculator in the gate you are not allowed to use 895 divided by 400 right 20 square is 400 see here i am getting it is 2.5 two three seven this is what the h1 height okay it means at the level of the height at this uh, 20 rpm okay and the h2 now we'll calculate h2 is equal to 895 divided by n2 square right it is 895 divided by 15 square you, you once you calculate this i have already done this it is a 3.977 meter okay this is how see now i will explain you in this see this is my uh, governor right this is the arm of the governor right this is at one certain position here the ball is ball of the governor these are the ball of the governor okay and the other position of the governor see this is what the height of the governor right this is height how much the h1 height right h1 is a 
The H2 is here. That is, this is 3.977. Means now from this I can calculate the slew moment. Slew moment is H1, H2. Slew moment is H2 minus H1 minus H2. Slew moment. Slew moment. that is delta H is equal to H2 minus H1 if you done this then you will get that is 1.1.74 meter right see this is what the answer from this you can easily you can easily <coughs> pick this right the 1.7 meter is too much light this is yeah this much is means around 2 meter it is right you can easily pick this reading but see if the speed changes we will see what happen if the speed changes in the next see if the speed is high if if the speed change if the speed is high that, that is rpm we have just now taken if the rpm goes to increases more than more than 90 rpm that case that case this governor is not sensitive means the, the uh, if rpm go, uh, goes increase then what happened that case it will not uh, sense that much means the value the delta h the slew moment is coming very less right delta h is coming very less if this is less then you cannot pick or you cannot uh, see that easily right that's why what we have to do uh, means uh, for what governor is only applicable for what governor is only used at low speeds this is what the disadvantages of the watt governor okay this only used for the low speeds right so uh, means up to up to 60 rpm you can go the n equal to 60 rpm beyond that you cannot use this 60 rpm right so in all so for the higher rpm there is a another governor which is the porter governor we will discuss it in the tomorrow's class which is used for higher speed also that is porter porter governor okay and this we will discuss in the tomorrow's class this is what all about the what governor you have to remember right this is in the next class we will see okay yes then we will see the analysis of the porter governor Okay guys, uh, please before closing the class, I request you guys please like, share and comments and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Okay and thank you.